Hello you plonkers and welcome back today to another video on the True Footy Channel. We're back. Round six, nine things we learnt. Here we go. Keep supporting the True Footy Channel. Comment down below what you learnt from this round. It was a long one. Started on Friday, ended on a bloody Wednesday, but that's Anzac round, isn't it? Anyway, let's go. Nine things we learnt. Like, subscribe if you're new. Let's go. Number one. Finals all but gone for Frio. Doggies dominate for four quarters. Right, finals are gone. Let's talk about the Bulldogs first, though, because they were very good against the Dockers on Friday night. Their pressure around the ground was fantastic. Their uh, ball use by hand. Threw the ball plenty, by the way, but nevertheless, we'll give it to them. They moved the ball great by hand. When there's a stoppage and you see McRae, Libertore, and the Bond all get a piece of the ball, you just know you're in trouble straight away because... After those three have it, they're going to be out. Um, and they moved the ball terrifically around Optus Stadium. We couldn't get the ball out of our back half. They locked down very well defensively to keep getting repeat shots on goal, forcing a turnover, and then, yeah, creating a, a scoring opportunity, which they didn't really take much in the first half. They could have blown the lead out massively in that first half. Luckily, they didn't. They just waited till the fourth quarter instead and absolutely pumped the free man of Dockers. Ending our hopes of finals, I believe. A great philosopher once said, progress isn't linear, which is definitely the case with the Fremantle Dockers. But to put it into perspective, we are the third youngest list in the competition, right? We had this great year last year, and now we're not living up to the heights of that year. We've lost David Mundy, absolute veteran. Blake Akers, big body experience. Rory Lobb, big body experience. Griff Logue, big body experience. Um, there's probably others that I'm missing in that list. But to replace these guys with the types of players like Matt Johnson, uh, Jaya Miss, Corey Wagner down back, like these guys that are so young, no experience, like obviously we're going to have to improve. Like we don't have the experience and the quality. Well, we do have the quality, but definitely not the experience or the big bodies that we did last year. So it's really not a surprise when you take a step back and take your purple lenses off and see why the Dockers are playing the way we are right now. Although we can play better, we can definitely play better. I think the coaching needs to be better, to be honest. It hasn't been good enough. We're still not kicking a winning score, uh, despite you know having opportunities to do so. Can't move the ball out of our back half. That's an issue, and I don't think that's actually on the players. I think that's on the coaches. So, yes, we're a young list, and we, we have a lot of time before we're going to be in that premiership window, I now believe. But the coaching has to be better as well. Um, so we need to use this year to just develop a lot of our young players, guys like Neil Erasmus, who hasn't had a look in, Nathan O'Driscoll, guys that are going to be in this side for a decade. Why play the types that aren't going to be there when we are pushing for the premiership? So I don't mind if we finish, well, I do mind, but if we finish like 12th to 13th and have a decent year and get a couple of good wins along the way, that's cool. We're definitely not going to contend for a premiership, so what's the point of even trying to think that we that we are so i think for your fans lower your expectations we're not going to make finals this year last year was great but the list is a lot different to where it was last year and the coaching has to be better just reading my notes i forgot to say that our next five consist of brisbane geelong melbourne and sydney so yeah we're really thriving the dockers right now <laughs> number two finlayson showing his best for the pair west coast put up a respectable effort the start to Finlayson's career at Port Adelaide has definitely been a little bit slow, and he has copped a fair amount of criticism, but I'm pretty sure he's been having a lot going on in his personal life. I couldn't tell you what it is, and I hope it stays personal for his sake, but he's also playing behind Charlie Dixon, uh, the hype of Mitch Georgiades, um, and Todd Marshall as well. So now he's settled in, and he's finally playing his best footy. He had a great game against Sydney, and I think he kicked a bag against West Coast as well. We're finally seeing his best, which he produced at GWS. So it's good to see that they have another key forward target that can produce bags of goals, especially now that Georgiades is out. And I know West Coast are like shit. Like they're not going to win many games at all, but they're doing the same thing that Adelaide did a few years ago when they started the rebuild, which is just crack in, compete, just match the other team's effort and intensity and you're going to improve. And I think that second half from West Coast was actually very good. I think the second half score, there was only like a goal or two in it. So West Coast, a very respectable second half effort and there's plenty of positives to build on every week for you, even though the results aren't going your way. So just take the positives from the game. Jai Cully had one of his best games that I've seen. Yes, West Coast is shit, but they are improving every week and that's all you can ask of them at the moment. Number three. Charlie Cameron is the most damaging small forward in a long time. 
against GWS, Charlie Cameron had seven goals, two behinds, 15 disposals, six marks. This kid is going on one. He's not a kid. He's in his prime years right now. He's been an All-Australian before, and I think he could and should be an All-Australian again this year. He kicked a bag of goals last week against North Melbourne. I know it's only in North Melbourne, but the week before that, he kicked a bag against Collingwood as well. I think he's third in the Coleman right now, Charlie uh, Charlie Cameron. <laughs> Charlie Kerno, Charlie Cameron, Jeremy Cameron, good goal kickers, a lot of them. <laughs> he must be one of the toughest players to defend as a defender. Like, he's so quick. He can get out to a lead and take a mark to have a set shot at goal, which he's good at. He's a good set shot goal kick. He can run up the ground, drag his defender all the way up, and then burn him back the other way to screw on the counter-attack. And if you corner him in the pocket or whatever, he's just so agile and quick and speedy that he's just going to step you and end up kicking an easy goal, probably. Charlie Cameron, we are seeing the best football of his career right now. Kicking goals for fun. Great to see. And when he plays well the other forwards at Brisbane come to play as well. So it's great to see Charlie Cameron having an insane year for the Brisbane Lions. Hopefully, we can see it continue. Number four, grand final deja vu. This was literally the grand final replayed, replayed. <laughs> City didn't show up. From the first quarter, it was non-competitive. It was like six goals to two or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I think I've seen this before. And then in the second quarter, Geelong just absolutely blown away. And then again and again, mate, this was literally like watching the grand final again. Uh, except this time, it was at Cadinia Park. And Geelong did raise the premiership flag. So, congratulations, Geelong. They're starting to slowly build into the season. I say slowly build. They've absolutely pumped two teams the last two weeks. So, they're right back in it now, Geelong, after that slow start. Hawkins and Cameron kicking five each. Jeremy Cameron, man. I think he's one of the best players of this generation. The confidence that he plays with. He's big, but he's quick and he's agile. His set shot goal kicking is like faultless he's absolutely insane to watch Jeremy Cameron at the minute Geelong they dominated the con- uh, the contested ball and Sydney couldn't really get the ball up the ground they had to really struggle for every yard of territory that they gained Geelong didn't make it easy for them and yeah Geelong are back grand final deja vu massive win very disappointing from a Sydney point of view though last week to have a good uh, win against Richmond and then to go down to Cadinia Park and just not be competitive, like I feel like Sydney are a more mature team than what they showed in this game. Especially after the grand final, you would have thought they'd have something to prove and just not get absolutely belted. Like just lose by forty points, not eighty. Come on, how hard is it, Sydney? A quick break in the video to promote my business, Druzy's Athlete Academy. If you want to get into a routine with going to the gym or doing exercise, Druzy's Athlete Academy is all you need. You don't have to go to the gym alone. With Druzy's Athlete Academy, you'll have exercise video tutorials walking you through every exercise. You'll have constant communication with me via DMs and we'll call every week to make sure that you're on track to achieve your goals. As a qualified exercise scientist, in the space of three months, I can guarantee that you are on your way to achieving your goals with no excuses, doing the most effective exercises and a plan that will guarantee your results. I will coach you over three months to guarantee that you are working toward your goals. You'll be doing the most effective exercises created by a qualified strength and conditioning coach to take out the guesswork to make sure that you're going to achieve your goals. If you have the thought that you want to get into exercise, the hardest part is acting on that thought initially and then making it happen. We can make it happen together with Druzy's Athlete Academy. True Footy viewers get 20% off using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout at druzysathleteacademy.com using the link in the description. If you want any more information or you want to discuss your goals with me to start working towards your physique, strength, and fitness goals, DM me on Instagram and we can get started as soon as next week. Druzy's Athlete Academy will guarantee that you get the results that you desire. If I do say so myself, it's a great service. My clients get results guaranteed. So if you are looking to get into the gym and into exercise, Druzy's Athlete Academy will guarantee you get the results that you desire. Let's get on with the rest of the things. Number five. Hawks show their inexperience and bottle it after a good contest. This game was tit for tat the whole game. Momentum was swinging in this way and that way. But it was a good contest. I saw good things from Hawthorne. I liked how they moved the ball at times off the turnover, moving it very quick. But then their inexperience showed a lot. They would be holding onto the ball for too long and just get chased down tackled when it was clearly a time to release the ball. And then they'd turn their own ball over and concede. So there's just clear inexperience in this Hawthorne side, although they did show some good things. When they went up by about two to three goals, I think it was 
about 15 points in that last quarter. It's just a lack of game management. If that's another side, if that's a Collingwood or a Melbourne, there's no way Adelaide come back and win that. But this Hawthorne side, it's very inexperienced, and they dropped four points, which they definitely should have held on to. But Hawthorne, you've been resigned to the bottom of the ladder. It's going to be you or West Coast, or maybe Frio. But <laughs> you, you just got to take the positives out of this game. There was lots of good performances from your young players across the ground. Cam McKenzie was one that I was really impressed with in this game. It's a tough pill to swallow for you Hawthorne fans because you want to just want to win, don't you? It's been a long start to the season, but you just got to take the positives from this game because you're not going to be competing for a while anyway. So just take the positives. Watch your young stars begin to prosper. But God, it's frustrating as a fan. Shit! Number six. St. Kilda looked the real deal for top four. Colton are far from their best. St. Kilda's pressure around the ground has got to be the best in the comp at the moment. I don't know if it's a new innovative style. Maybe it is that Ross Lyon has implemented. But the influence of the centre-half forward at applying defensive pressure up the ground has become a focal point of this St. Kilda's style of play. Having guys like Dan Butler... Jack Higgins, and I think even Machito Owens pushing up the ground, tackling, and then starting the counter-attack to get the score from turnover the other way is what's winning St. Kilda games at the moment. Not only do you apply pressure as a forward, you then bring your defender up the ground and create space for faster players to run into. It's what St. Kilda are doing at the moment. They're doing it very well. We'll see once it gets snuffed out how to stop it, but right now it's working, and it was good enough to beat Carlton on Saturday night. And for Carlton, it's a weird one because you dominated the midfield battle. Like, you look at the stats and all the disposals, it's like Walsh, Akers, Chera, Cripps, Newman. Like, you dominated the contested ball, had plenty of it, had more possession of the ball as well, just across the ground, but only nine marks inside 50 for the day. So there's just a breakdown between the midfield and the forward line right now and just the ball movement in general. You're not kicking high scores at the moment. And Harry Mackay... God, like, to be a Coleman medalist and then just have these games where you belly the ball and just do the most frustrating stuff for a fan to watch, it's like, just come back to the basics. If you want to snap the ball, snap the ball, but at least just take a breath, know what you're executing, because at the moment, he just looks like he's rushing it, and it must be very frustrating for the players out there to do all the hard work to get the ball to Harry Mackay, and then he just bloody kicks the ball on the belly and it just shoots straight up to the roof of Marvel Stadium. You're a professional athlete execute your skill, and get back to what you know how to do. Charlie Kerno is still playing good footy, but he can't do it all by himself. Two common medalists in there, and they're not kicking enough score to win games at the moment, Carlton. So I don't know how this gets fixed. I'm not a football coach, but we know that Carlton are much better than this. Their midfield is getting plenty of the ball, but not doing enough with it. It's a bit of a tricky one for Carlton at the minute. Number seven, exactly what Gold Coast needed. Ah, rats! Gold Coast have so much pressure on them at the moment just to win and keep improving because they've always been shit, basically. So to get a 43-point win after a disappointing loss last week against the Wooden Spoon contenders in Frio, it's it's good, it's positive. You're like, yes, Gold Coast, 43-point win. Ben King, great game. Finally getting his confidence back and kicking snags. Someone's phoning my phone. This is my brother, hey! You're on nine things we learn. Ben King kicks five. It's good to see him playing some great footy. Uh, my beer Chol has a good game. Ainsworth gets on the end of a couple. And Bailey Humphrey plays probably his best game at the AFL level. You're thinking, yes, there's more contributors in this side now. Gold Coast, everything's looking up. You look up, you look down, and there's Buddy Tuchmiller on the floor with a lateral meniscus tear in his knee. The engine that runs the Gold Coast side, finally, once they start kicking a big score and having some different contributors... And then you break down. Your whole team breaks down because Tuke Miller is literally the engine in this side. Hopefully I'm wrong and they can have some more contributors other than Tuke Miller because he does it every week. But it was looking so good and so bright for the Suns and then the clouds come over and Tuke Miller is out for a long time. We'll see how they go without him, but it is going to be tough. God, I nearly vomited on my fucking microphone. That would have been gross. Number eight. Just when Richmond thought they figured out the Ds, the Ds went up a gear. I liked Richmond's approach in the first half of this game. They weren't going in long, kicking the high ball, because we've seen this so many times before when teams do that. Stephen May, Jake Lever, etc. They're just going to eat that up all day and then intercept and go, create that spread from there. So what Richmond did, they moved the ball around the ground very well. They went wide, they used the width, spread out the Melbourne players, and then when they went inside 50, they went in low and created chaos 
which is a great way to play against Melbourne because it takes Levi and May out of the game. And they led for a large portion of that first half, maybe even into the third quarter, I'd say. But Melbourne definitely grew into this game. The pressure lifted around the whole ground. They started getting that fluid ball movement. And a few new guys up forward that really won them this game. Cade Chandler, I think he's only played about less than 15 games. Not too sure, but he got three goals. Jacob Van Royen, someone that I've worked with during my time at the State Academy, absolutely dominated in that fourth quarter, taking big pack marks, kicking big goals in front of 83,000 at the MCG as a 19-year-old. The talent that this kid has is enormous, and it was so good to see a young kid that I've worked closely with live out his dream and have such an impact in such a big game like this. And Petty did some good things up forward as well. So a new look forward line and a mature response from uh, being behind in this game for Melbourne. They grew into it. It was a very mature and professional win for this Melbourne side, especially since they've got more young players in this team now. Just shows the maturity that they have developed over the last few years to take control of a game after being behind and doing what they had to do to win, dominating that second half, lifting the pressure around the ground and new faces, new contributors, kicking goals to win the Ds, the game of football. And Richmond, for me, although they played decent in this first half, they, they're just not it for me this year. I've not been really massive on them all year. I'm sure they can pull out a big win at some point, but they just can't play four quarters at the minute. And, yeah, I just don't think their sort of bottom eight players in this starting 22 are good enough to make Richmond make finals, to be honest. They might sneak in, but I don't think they're going to make waves this year. Richmond, still building. And, yeah, you can say this dynasty, that dynasty, it's gone. It's done. And number nine, it keeps happening. Woke up this morning, feeling fine. Got Anzac Day on my mind. Walk down the stairs, kick up my feet. Anzac Day footy, what a treat, right? Chuck the footy on. Essendon are winning by like three, four goals. They get up to about five goals up at one point, heading into three-quarter time break. And you just know, like... Collingwood are going to come back here. Even though Essendon had all the momentum, they were playing much better football than Collingwood in that third quarter. You just knew that Collingwood were going to come back. There's no way that they're not at least going to be within a kick or two by the time this game is done. They come out and just completely flick the switch. It was like a night and day performance from that third quarter to the fourth quarter. Collingwood fans would know what it's like, but as any other, <laughs> as a fan of any other team in the competition... Imagine your team just has an absolute shocking quarter and then dominates and don't put a foot wrong in the last term to storm home and win the game. It is unbelievable. This Collingwood side is crazy. Love them or hate them, they are box office. They are entertaining as to watch. Even if you hate them, you tune in, I guarantee. Because they've got stars all over the park. Nick Dacos, I talk about this bloke every week, but he gets better every week. I think he had 42 touches or 40 plus Two massive goals in that last quarter. Man lives and breathes the Collingwood Football Club. Just so good to see him dominate. It was a great Anzac Day game. Uh, Essendon, unlucky. But what can you do? This Collingwood side, they're just so OP in the last quarter. You can't stop them. Out of the last 11 times that Collingwood have been trailing at three-quarter time, they've won 10 of those games. That is an insane stat. This Collingwood side, they just have a belief to win like no other side in the AFL, and I think they're going to win the flag because how can you be five goals down, be playing like absolute dog shit, and then storm home and play the best footy that you possibly can at the flick of a dime? Absolutely insane. That's going to wrap up nine things we learned for round six. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back next week for more. If you enjoy this series, show me some love. I need some love. Give, give me a like, subscribe to the True Footy channel, and comment down below what you learned and that you love me from this round. Remember that Druzy's Athlete Academy will guarantee the results that you desire. Work with me to achieve your fitness, physique, and strength goals guaranteed with Druzy's Athlete Academy, and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care, you plonkers. Bye!